In this presentation, we will create invoices within QuickBooks Pro 2019. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. Here we are on the home page. We currently have the open windows open. The open windows can be opened by going to the view tab up top and open windows list. We are now going to be entering an invoice. The invoices will, of course, be in the customer section of the home page. It's really useful to see the home page and see how everything is going to be laid out here. The invoice will be this document. The invoice is going to be used by QuickBooks in order to help us create the financial statements. They're also going to be the form that we will use to give to the client to, to basically bill the client. There's a difference between very difference, but similarities between the invoice and the create sales receipts. These, these two documents will look very similar. The sales receipt is something that we are going to give uh, if we are paid at the same point in time. So you can imagine if we sell guitars, someone comes into our store and says, we're going to buy this guitar. They pay us at the counter. Then we can imagine giving a sales receipt, us putting it into the system, giving them the receipt that journal entry would then be to increase the cash, the checking account, or whatever form of payment that we received, and to record the related sales, uh, increasing the uh, the income at that time, as well as the cost of goods sold and inventory. Uh, so we'll talk about that. But the, the difference here with the create invoice will be that uh, this will be a type of document that will be if we are the type of company that is going to uh, do the work before we receive payments. So many service types of companies like a bookkeeper will have this type of, of, of company, typically a law, a law firm, where what the work will be done and then we'll invoice the client for the work that was done and then expect to receive a check in the mail in a future time period. The difference being that we will then increase the asset not of cash or some kind of payment, but of accounts receivable that, that being an account that, oh, that people owe us money and the other side going to sales. So those two forms will look different. We're going to create the uh, invoice here. So we're going to uh, click on the invoice. And we're going to say that uh, we're going to enter a customer that we are invoicing. And this is basically, you can imagine we're billing the, the customer. So they bought, we can imagine they bought the guitar. We're billing them the guitar. And possibly we're putting this invoice on the guitar that we're going to ship to the, to the customer. So we shipped to the customer and put the invoice on it, expecting payment at that time. Again, uh, in a service company, of course, we would do invoices a lot. It really depends on the type of company as to whether we will invoice the client getting paid later after the work is done. In this case, the work being delivering a guitar or if we get paid at the same time or even if we get paid before we do the work in some industries. So we're going to say that the company is going to be Anderson Guitars. And if I select the drop down, we see Anderson Guitars there. We can also just start typing in Anderson and there it is, and it auto fills. That looks correct. Uh, once again, we could customize the template. We're going to keep this template. Also, we have some added information over here. I don't need this at this time. I'm going to collapse this window with this little item here, hide that section. Okay, so I'm just tabbing through this, and I do recommend using the tab key to go through this. We will uh, keep it at uh, January 12th, 2019. We'll keep the invoice, so I'm going to keep that invoice there. We're going to go to uh, bill two. Uh, uh, we we could we should probably have uh, the address here. And again, if we set up the the customer to enter the address fields, we would then of course have the address. It depends on how we're going to give this to the customer, uh, um, whether we mail it when where we will need the address, or we can email it. So the email, of course, uh, which we would need the email address. And then uh, I'm going to keep this blank here. The terms, I'm just going to put net 30. And these are basically when we expect uh, payment on the invoice. So that's payment terms typically. Okay, so what we need for sure here, of course, is going to be the item. This is the inventory item that we are selling. Uh, this case is going to be the Steinberger solid body guitar. And so if we select this item, uh, we can find it down here. We can go through our, our inventory items and uh, see if we can locate the Steinberger solid body and or we could start typing in if we know the item number. Uh, here it is here. If we know the item number, which is a, we called it a GTP. Not sure exactly why, but that's the one we, we called it. 
And so that's going to be the item number. The quantity is going to be one. The description auto populates. Now, where did this information come from? How did I get this item in the system? Remember that we went to lists and we went to items. And these are our inventory items. So these are the inventory items we typically sell, the items that QuickBooks then uses to create the system. So I'm going to go back to our invoice over here. So that's going to be our invoice. The amount will, will populate automatically. And then we have the amount here populating automatically. Also note that the sales tax is now being calculated on this as well, uh, recording the, the total being uh, 430. Sales tax at 5%. That's also an item we set up. So remember the sales tax. If we go to the items list, we set up uh, the, the, the tax item, the sales tax item, which is down here. And that'll change from location to location. We're just using 5% as an example. So sales or usage tax. So I'm going to go back to the create invoice. And there's then are going to be our balance. So uh, if we think about the journal entry that's going to be involved in an invoice, it's actually fairly complicated. Uh, and so we want to make sure that uh, if we can understand that, it'll help us a lot. I'm also going to remove the print later item here. So it's not going to print later. Okay, so what's the journal entry going to be? Well, an invoice means that it's going to select accounts receivable. It's going to, we haven't gotten paid yet. It's going to increase the asset of accounts receivable for the customer uh, Anderson. It will also record this on the account by customer saying who owes us money for accounts receivable, the subsidiary account. The, the other side is going to go to sales, so the sales amount. But the amount going to sales is only our sales, the 410. Not the full amount they're going to pay, 430, because we don't get to keep the $20.50. So the, other, so the credit is going to be 400, uh, 410. And then the $20.50 is going to be a credit or increase a payable that we owe to the, uh, to the state for sales tax that we're going to have to owe. So we'll see all this after we record it. Then the next thing that th that's going to happen is that there will be cost of goods sold and a reduction of inventory. So this will also trigger inventory going down and cost of goods sold uh, going up, the expense. Now, you, you might say, I don't even see those numbers on the invoice. They're not on the invoice. There's no invoice number for cost of goods sold. Why? Because we're giving this to the client or the customer, and we don't want the cost of goods sold on there. Uh, but we do want QuickBooks to record it using this. And therefore, if we go to the lists again, and we're looking for this GTS, if we double click on this, we can see that QuickBooks knows the cost. It's right here. But, and it's going to use the cost when we create the invoice and record it to cost of goods sold. However, it's not going to be something that shows up on the invoice. So let's see that. I'm going to close this here. And we're going to go back to the invoice. And this is going to be it. So let's go ahead and save and close this item. And you've changed Anderson terms. That's okay. We're going to say yes. And let's see if it does what we just explained here. We're going to go to reports up top. We're going to go to company and financial. We're going to go to the balance sheet standard. And I'm going to change the date to, and let's go to the customized dates this time and see the whole year. So I'm going to change it from 010119 to uh, 123119. And I'm going to say, okay. And that'll help us to, when we double click on something, it'll give us the date range, even though we only have one date as of for the balance sheet. Okay, so accounts receivable here, that should have gone up. So we're going to double click on the accounts receivable, zooming in on it, and there's Anderson Guitars. If we double click on that, there's the amount. And that's for the entire amount, 430, not the sales amount. That's what we expect to get a check for in the future. Closing this back out, closing this back out. The other side of that is on the income statement, the profit and loss. So we'll go to the reports, the company and financial, and then profit and loss. Changing the range now from 010119 to 013119. Oh, let's make it, we could make it January, but let's make it 123119 to be consistent. Okay, and there's the other side, there's sales, 410. So if I double click on that, 
same invoice, 410. However, if I double click on that, the 430 is what we're going to get. We only charged revenue of 100, 410. So the difference is that $20. Where did that go? $20.50. So let's close this out. Close this out. We're going to go back to the balance sheet in the open windows. And then we're going to check the payable for the sales tax payable. There's the $20.50. So if I double click on that, there it is there. If we double click on that, there, there it is. So there's the $20. It's a payable because we're going to collect it, but it's not ours. We got to pay it to somebody, the state. So I'm going to close this back out, close this back out. And again, we're not done yet because we sold inventory. And so the inventory is going to be an asset that went down. So if we go to the inventory, here's the inventory. If we double click on that item, we see inventory inventory decreased and it's 328. If we double click on that, there's no 328 on this form. Where how I mean how is this form making 328? That's because it's being driven by the item. So if we go to the item over here, once again that item has the cost so the, the the form is making this journal entry even though we don't see that number on the journal entry so if we go back to that transaction 328 there's that the other side of that transaction then I'm going to go back to the profit and loss profit and loss it's going to be here that's going to be the cost of goods sold on the other side of that transaction so what happened on the income statement it went up 410 even though we didn't get paid yet and then the expense was 328 the effect on net income or gross profit and net income is 82 dollars. that's what we actually made on this transaction okay so i'm going to go back to it an invoice and we'll do this again and go through this process with another invoice let's actually start from the home page so we'll go to the home page we're going to create an invoice once again uh, also, you can go to customers up top and uh, and create an invoice if you so choose or hit control I. OK, so we're going to say this time it's it's Jones guitars. And so if I select the drop down, there's Jones guitars. I'm going to type it in and it'll autofill as we go. We're going to use the template uh, January 12th. That's correct. The invoice I'm just tabbing through this. That's what we want. We're not going to have uh, the, the bill, too. I'm going to leave that as is it should auto populate if we had the uh, address or bill to within the uh, customer i'm going to leave these going to say the terms i'm going to say net 30 as kind of our default terms and then the item is going to be a gusam2 <laughs> so we want which is going to be a gibson usa so we're looking for this gibson usa here's what we called it here so if we called it GUSA, it'll then populate for us. Tab quantity one. There's the description automatically given, drawn from the items. There's the rate. There's the amount. Again, sales tax being calculated at 5%. That's 380 times 0 0.05, $19, uh, giving us the total of 399. What's going to happen once again when we do this? Invoice means accounts receivable is going to go up. It's going to go up by the 399. The credit, the other side, is going to be an increase to sales, but it's only going to be for 380 because that's all the revenue we get to keep. The other 19 is going to be a credit or increasing a payable, a liability, to the sales tax payable. We also have cost of goods sold that will be recorded, although we can't see that number here, but it is known by QuickBooks through the item and the related reduction in inventory. So let's let's save and close this and check that one more time. We, we changed the terms. That's OK. And we'll go to the balance sheet in the opens items. We're going to go to once again, accounts receivable, double clicking the 21. There is uh, the Gibson. So 399, double click on that. There's our invoice for the full amount. The other side, closing this out, closing this out, profit and loss open items it's going to be in merchandise sales double clicking there's the 380 not the same number double clicking on it it picking up only the sales now amount not the 19 added to it 
So that's that. The difference, 19, where's that? Closing this, closing this, back to the balance sheet. That's going to be in the liabilities in the payable for the sales tax payable that we should have here. There it is, 39.50. Double clicking on that. There's the 19. Double clicking on that. There's the 19. We're not quite done yet. You'd think that would be it, but that's not it. Closing these back out. Going back up to inventory. Inventory went down. We sold a guitar. Here's inventory on the balance sheet. Double clicking on inventory. There's the guitar we sold, 304. Double clicking on that. We don't see that number here. Why not? Because we don't want to put it on the invoice, but we want the invoice to drive the transaction. Where could we find that number? On the items list for the Gibson USA. Double clicking on it. There's the cost. So that's what's being used, even though we can't see it on the form. Closing this back out, back to the uh, invoice. So that's that. Closing this out, back to the profit and loss. And we're going to say the other side is going to be cost of goods sold. Cost of goods sold, there's the cost. So between these two items, we have revenue of 790 and cost of goods sold of 632, which is the 158 uh, net profit for that transaction. If we go back to the home page, we can see the next thing that's going to happen is we expect to receive payment in the mail at which point we're going to reduce the accounts receivable and record the, the cash, but undeposited. And then we will deposit them, batching them all together at one time. Last report we want to look at here that was affected, we go to reports up top, is going to be the customer report receivables. So I want to look at the receivable balance summary. Let's go look at the receivable balance detail. Uh, receivable balance detail. And then we'll see that uh, these customers, these invoices then are, are being included in the receivable balance detail for uh, uh, these items. The 430 and the Jones, I think was the 399. So again, if we drill down on either of those, we will once again find that invoice. Closing this back out, this number is a subsidiary account, which should support 21,329, that amount. What's on the balance sheet? Going back to the balance sheet, the 21,329 in accounts receivable. So this accounts receivable says people owe us money. And then we got to say, well, who owes us money? We got to go collect from them. Uh, so then we go, okay, well, that's going to be in, uh, in the report for the customer balance detail. Here is who owes us money, it adding up to that same amount. If they haven't yet paid us, we can always go back into this invoice uh, and uh, print it out, mail it again, uh, email it again. Last thing I want to do is just give an example of printing this invoice. So uh, a couple, if we just want to print it for our, our records or email it at, some, at a later time, we're going to print it as a PDF. You could go to the file tab, you could save it as a PDF, or if you have the cute PDF printer or some kind of PDF printer, you can go to print and then we're going to uh, print the invoice. And then I'm going to put it to the cute PDF printer here. This is a free printer and then print it just to, just to show that that's one of the options that we can have to organize this information. I'm going to then uh, put it on our uh, desktop under get great guitars reports. I'm going to make a section seven. Section seven and then double click on this item and I'm going to call it uh, invoice for Jones and then and then you might want uh, a, a date here right 01.12.19 uh, and then save so that's one format you can you can use to, to print these out or to print them as a PDF and depending on how you're going to send them, either as mailing them or as sending as an email. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info.